Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial for variables. Uh, today what I'm going to be covering is global variables, and then we'll move into local variables, and then finally NBT data, and just some other stuff, uh, you know, just basic knowledge and stuff, how to use that kind of things. So uh, today we're going to be looking at global variables. Uh, right now, if you go to your main mod workspace, if you click down on global variables, you can actually add a new global variable. Uh, global variable is basically the same thing as a local variable, but it's more for a wider spectrum of um, synchronization and stuff like that, where local variables are a little bit different. Um, the first thing that you need to do is give your variable a name. This is the name that you're going to be able to identify the um, variable itself. Now, before I go any further, uh, if you haven't watched my first uh, tutorial on this series, uh, just a basic overview of what variables are, what they do, and some basic uh, knowledge on um, variables themselves, uh, go check out the p first part of this uh, series, and it'll explain a little bit more about um, what variables actually are and do. So. Uh, now, I'm just going to cover a little bit from what last episode to uh, it is relevant to uh, global variables. So logic is basically a true or false statement. Um, this can be used to determine one or two states. So if it's true or false, if not, then do something. Uh, these can be linked, of course, in procedures. Uh, numbers are anything that are number related. Uh, for example, uh, if it's a solid number or point form, it doesn't matter. It can still be a number variable. And uh, strings are basically text variables. So I'm just going to click a uh, number. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is give it a name. So I'm just going to go and call it timer. Um, it's always best to start variables with a lowercase uh, letter and um, then work on capitalizing each um, new word. So um, time timer uh, clock or something like that. We'll call it something like that. So that will work fine. And now you have another option down here which has uh, three other options. Uh, you have session which is um, affects all worlds, uh, main screen and menus. Uh, but does not save them. So you can basically um, set this if you want it to reset every time the um, game restarts or someone uh, restarts the world or loads in the world and stuff like that. Then you have world, which is specifically to that dimension. Uh, it will save the data and um, you can basically use it across that one dimension. And then map is for basically saves the, the data, but um, it's uh, global. So it's across the entire, all, all the dimensions in the world and stuff like that. So you have a few different options. Usually you want to go with map, that's fine. So I'm just going to click OK. And uh, we're going to actually want uh, another procedure. Uh, we want uh, XP. XP amount and then what we're going to do is set this as a number and a, another map variable. So now we have two variables up here. You can actually set the variable uh, base amount over here if you want to. Um, in most cases you want to just keep it zero and then use it in the um, the actual like configure in the, the procedure itself but there might be cases actually edit the, um, the variable itself. So I'm just gonna leave these at zero. And if we go over to a couple, our workspace, I have a couple things set up already. Um, I have XP load and XP save. So we're actually gonna make a procedure that will save um, the experience level of the player. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set a global trigger for this procedure. And if we scroll down to on player tick update, and then what we're going to do is go to our variables, custom variables right down here. We're going to drag and drop uh, set global um, timer clock to, and then we need a number to set it to. So I'm actually gonna set um, this up by adding a, uh, 
a little math operator down here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our custom variables we're going to grab the get global variable time clock and then we're going to grab a number variable or number element and then we're going to set this to 0 0.05 this will update pretty much every second uh, it's, I think every second it will update and then what we want to do is uh, we're going to uh, go and create an if statement and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a general operator for a math based one so this one right here and then we're going to go is it equal to or greater than and then what we want to do is set a number. So if this is equal to or greater than 20, uh, that should be 20 seconds. Uh, we can set this number to a lower amount, um, but you know, whatever you think is right, uh, type in what, how long. And then what we wanna do is duplicate the um, get global variable, and then we're gonna set this to the timer. So what this is doing is it's gonna be counting up constantly on each player tick. And then we're basically testing if the value is equal to uh, 10 seconds or so. And if it's true, then what we want to do is we want to uh, set uh, another variable, uh, XP amount. And if we go to entity and scroll down until we find, it might be, under player actually let me just check yes x uh get player xp level so if we drag this right onto the variable itself it's going to store the uh player xp level to the um new variable xp amount and then what we want to do is finally set our timer back to zero so it will continue saving so this will be set to zero and that's just a basic timer. So you have your timer up here, you're testing for the timer amount, you're basically setting the locate, uh, the XP amount, uh, storing it to your, um, your variable for your XP amount, and then you're setting the timer back to zero, and then it will start that process all over again. So with that being saved, uh, we can go and load the experience. So, now that we have a fresh thing, what we need to do is when the player responds, so if we scroll down to when player responds, uh, what we can do now is uh, we can uh, set the experience level. So if we go to player and then we can go and search for um, add experience and then what we're going to do is we're going to delete this number because we don't need it and we're going to import our global variable for our um, XP amount and then we're basically going to use our XP amount from the last save so when the player responds it's going to automatically get that number from the global variable and it's going to give the player that experience. So it's basically like a loop. Um, if the player dies again, they get to keep their experience. So if we save that and test it, I'll show you how it all works. Now there is one last thing that I should probably note, and that is uh, global variables aren't really great for multiplayer support. Uh, usually you want to use um, things that revolve around the player or certain uh, stats uh, for um, like MBT data if you can or if you can use local variables. It depends on how you're setting your mod up, but uh, for global variables, it will be synchronized across all players. So this XP example will be uh, for every player that dies, not um, specific players. So just keep that in mind when you're making global variables. It's not the best uh, thing for making um, multiplayer support compatibility, but there will be things that will work perfectly fine on multiplayer. It's just not always going to work uh, using global variables. So let's hop in game and I'll uh, show you how it all works. 
All right, so we're in game now, and if I use all these um, experience bottles, uh, or a decent amount of them, and uh, let's just uh, go find that iron golem. It's somewhere around here. We can actually punch it, and then we'll end up dying pretty quickly. So, as you can see, we actually kept our experience. So, we had 14 levels exactly. Well, around 14 levels. Um, it did reset to the solid number, though. But if we go back, um, obviously, we did lose our experience, so we can pick it up again. A little bit can be picked up, not a whole bunch. But um, now you can see that the 16 is just about halfway. If we hit them again. That was a quick hit. Uh, it just resets to the solid number of 16. So that's basically how variables, global variables work. You can do some pretty cool stuff with them. It's just a matter of uh, figuring out what you need to use them for. And um, I mean, there's tons of stuff you can use them for. If it's a number variable or a number element that you want to test for, you can pretty much do that for any number component in the thing and set it as a variable. So it's pretty limited, uh, not limited to what you can do with it. It's just a matter of figuring out what you need for your mod itself and setting it all up. So hopefully you guys found this part uh, helpful. Um, if you need any help or anything like that, um, I have a Discord server. The link is always in the description below. So uh, definitely check that out. And uh, there's some pretty good people on there that can help you if I'm not available or recording or whatever. And... Um, other than that, uh, hopefully you guys found this tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.